I have built an advanced AI chat assistant loaded with awesome features, customizable system messages, image and file uploads, and even an audio voice transcription, all integrated into a smooth, intuitive conversation flow. But what's truly really amazing is that this entire project spans over 5,000 lines of code, yet remains organized, clean, and incredibly modular, with distinct submodules designed for maximum maintainability. In this video, we'll give you a quick, exciting demo of how this powerful chat assistant works, and then we'll dive right into the coding techniques and strategies I used to rapidly build it using Cursor. Believe it or not, I put all of this together in about an hour, encountering minimal errors along the way. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. We can have a regular conversation with our chatbot with streaming responses. We can also select different, create and select different uh, system messages, such as the emoji rule, which tells it to only respond with emojis. Now, if I say hi, you see that it responds with emojis. If we select the binary rule, it will respond with binary. You can delete and create as many system messages as you like. We can also upload images via the upload button, or we can just paste in an image. Here, we've pasted this image. Let's ask it, what is this? And it explains us what the image is. And we can also upload documents both text files and PDFs. Let's upload this uh, user rules file, and then we can ask what is this, and then it will be able to explain to us what the rules are. We can also uh, upload audio or MP3 files and then get it transcribed. And we can uh, click on transcribe and it automatically transcribes and actually streams it, whatever is the uh, transcription of the audio is. Also, the conversations can be deleted and new conversations can be generated and the conversations are stored in the local storage. But the entire point of this exercise, which I did with my patrons during a live meeting, was to actually handle how we can build uh, really large projects, uh, several thousand lines of code long. And uh, that's what that's what the point of this video is. So let's start talking about that. Well, when we started building this project, we uh, started building it via the composer using the edit mode or now called the manual mode. And each time we gave it a message or a feature upgrade, we have also saved it under a uh, project rules, MDC. We set, say we set this to manual so that uh, the, the agent or the composer won't access this because this is just for information purposes. It is divided into step-by-step step. And as you can see, we were able to build this in 10 steps. Error correcting messages isn't here. So this entire thing took about, uh, about an hour and we were able to build an app about 5,000 lines of code, uh, fixing errors. The step one was uh, to actually just to create a streaming response. Uh, to just to get messages uh, to be displayed to the user with a fast API web application. And the second step was to stream the tokens to the user in real time. And for that, we ran a sample test and actually get the Delta events. And then we gave this to the uh, composer so that it knows how to handle those events. So essentially at this point, we are not actually worrying about the, to breaking stuff into uh, modules or separate files. We actually started doing this at around 1,000 lines of code mark. So this is actually up to you. We did not actually instruct Composer to break the files into multiple pieces at first. So we wanted to get a baseline working. Once we uh, had something uh, going on that we liked and, the, uh, and some kind of idea of the app was established, then we asked it to actually split everything into modules, which it did. And our third step was to implement a message history panel. And the fourth step was to implement the uh, system messages. And we also asked it to add the way to clear the system messages. Uh, and at the step six, this is about where we decided we will be adding that we will be adding many more features to this web app. So we'd like to break this into modules. So it's much more better, much better organized. So I was using actually voice transcription to write these. 
um, in Windows, you can actually use this, which is with Windows and H key, which will actually transcribe your text directly into any in text input box. So at this point, we uh, we divided the app into multiple modules. At this point, we had about maybe 1,500 to 2,000 lines of code. Uh, step seven was to implement a, an image input. Uh, we have gotten this from OpenAI's uh, documentation, uh, just grabbing the exactly necessary code, such as the images and vision code. We didn't use the one that we can send with URLs, but actually we used the example passing a base64 encoded images, and it can actually accept multiple messages as well. But we did give it a you know pinpoint example and then asked it that we would we, that we would like users to be able to copy paste multiple uh, or single images into it or even upload them as they like. So that was step seven and step eight. Uh, so by, by the way, while we're going these through these steps, of course there were errors and we corrected those errors. Uh, but you know it, it was very really surprising that we didn't encounter many errors. Uh, I can confidently say that it was it was pretty good. Cursor was pretty good hand, about handling up to 5,000 lines of code. Now, I don't know what will happen if we re make this go to 10,000, which I will actually experiment with. I will do another uh, 1,000x lab meeting with my patrons uh, to actually try to increase this to 10,000 lines of code. If you decide to become a member of my Patreon AI community, you'll be able to join that. Also, uh, if you you know if you want to watch the full video in building this, you can actually watch it from my Patreon. Link to that will be in the description and in the comment. So step eight uh, is to uh, the document upload like uh, .txt and PDF documents because uh, OpenAI actually now has uh, a way to upload PDF documents directly both. Uh, by both is uploading it as a file to the their API or to cloud or to uh, or to send it as a base64 this is the one we chose also we wanted to be able to accept that txt documents of course you can choose to uh, modify it so that you can accept all sorts of documents we gave that example and uh, step nine was the transcription step so we gave the example and I explained it to the model how to implement it yeah, and step 10 was to actually include it so that this was actually trying to uh, make sure that transcriptions was available to the uh, entire conversation, which uh, didn't work out perfectly. But at that time, uh, we decided to end the uh, meeting uh, to continue at another time. Yeah, so this was pretty cool. I'm, I'm really impressed with Cursor. Uh, so several thousand lines of code is very easy. Uh, you know, you can one shot. Uh, you know, eight, nine hundred, or fifteen hundred lines of code easily, uh, but you know, uh, with clever prompting and by divide asking cursor to divide your uh, app into multiple files, you can actually achieve quite a lot. Just remember that when you're select, when you're, if you want to work with single files, or that if any one of your single files is actually getting pretty uh, long, for example, our app.js actually is at twelve hundred lines of code. Uh, see, the so Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, without thinking, might struggle to edit this uh, single line of file, uh, I mean, single file, because it is a token output uh, limit of 8,000 tokens, which, which is roughly about seven to 800 lines of code. You may get some errors, which you may not realize why, uh, why, do you have, why you are seeing these errors. It's most likely due to the context limit. But if you turn on thinking, both with 3.7 and 3.7 Sonnet Max, the maximum output of the thinking models is 64,000, including the thinking. So that's about five to 6,000 lines of code. So thinking models uh, not only perform better, but they are actually more valuable due to how much more code that they can uh, output. Also, uh, not, this is not only obvious uh, in when you're dealing with single files, long single file situations, but what if the model wants to output quite a lot of code? Like here, it wanted to update twice, and here it's updating many files, you know, uh, and if you want to give the model a chance to be able to output as much as it needs. Just remember that. Yeah, 
You can actually download this code, but more importantly, if you do become a patron, you'll be able to watch how we built this. I think uh, it's very useful. And when you do become a patron, you get also get a lot of perks, but I'll talk about that here in a moment. Thank you for watching. Also, if you become a paying member of my Patreon AI community, you'll be able to join my 1000X Lab uh, meetings. I do these regularly. So far, we have 26 of them. You will also get access to my 1000X Cursor course with 42 independent full app and idea building walkthrough videos over 25 hours of content. Check this out as well. If you're into vibe coding or AI assisted coding, I think you will find this really beneficial. Also, you can find all my videos at my website, echolive.live, and you can find the code download links, over 400 of them. If you're a patron, just click on the code download link and it'll take you to the Patreon post where the code files are attached below. Thank you for watching. Um, I came across 1000X Cursor course. And that's great, you know, it just made everything super silky smooth. It just, it just worked, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, 1000X, your coding.